Okay, in this problem, we're looking at a skier sliding down a frictionless slope. We're going to use chapter four principles. We're going to be using Newton's second law of motion. And we're interested in this problem because it's a little different than the other problems we've done because since the person's on an incline, it actually works to our advantage to use a tilted coordinate system. And it's really quite a challenge to do this problem without a tilted coordinate system. So we're going to make our x-axis at an angle like this to match the angle of the slope. So this is 30 degrees from horizontal. We, we sketch that in first. And then we draw the y-axis perpendicular to the x-axis. Those two axes always have to be perpendicular to each other. All right, so we've got our coordinate system defined. We're going to be looking for acceleration. Now, as the skier moves down the slope, they're not moving at all in the y direction. And so a sub y is going to be 0 because vy is constant. vy is going to be a constant value of 0. So the acceleration that they ask us for, that acceleration is a sub x. It's going to be negative because we picked up the slope to be positive, And we know the units for acceleration. We're also asked to find the normal force, which we're using the symbol f sub n. Your book uses the symbol capital N, but we reserve that symbol capital N to be for Newtons. And we always expect a positive value whenever we use the Newton's second law to solve for the magnitude of a force. When you solve for the magnitude of a force, you should get a positive number. All right, now we're going to draw in our forces. We've got the normal force, which is acting perpendicular to the slope. It's 100% in the positive y direction. We have our weight, which is acting straight down. Just because we tilt the coordinate system doesn't mean the weight becomes tilted. It still acts straight toward the center of the Earth. All right, so the challenge in this problem is that the weight is no longer 100% in the y direction. So we have to find the components. We're going to be using Newton's second law, and we need to know how much of that force, this weight force, is acting in the negative x direction and how much is acting in the negative y direction. So we're going to draw in those components here. I've drawn them in a different color. And we need to recognize that this is a 90 degree angle here. And then, because the reason you want to make sure those components are always at a 90 degree angle relative to each other is because they're components and they need to be smaller than the weight. So neither one of these can be the hypotenuse. The weight needs to be the hypotenuse. These are the pieces that make that up. We also need to, to see what angle this is. Now we had our standard coordinate system, which was straight up for y and straight to the right for x, and then we twisted it by 30 degrees. So that means what was normally our y-axis here and what our y-axis is right here are 30 degrees apart from each other because we twisted everything by 30 degrees. So now we can fill in this table so the weight is going to be equal to mg times the sine of 30 degrees, the sine right across, okay, it's opposite. So that comes out to be a value of 490 newtons. Now we need to take care with the sine. This arrow is acting diagonally down into the left, which is in the negative x direction. So we'll say that's negative. And then along this side, that's adjacent to the 30 degree angle. So this is mg cosine 30 degrees, and that's also in the negative direction. So that's negative 424 newtons. The normal force doesn't act at all in the x direction. It acts all in the y direction. So we don't know what the value is, but we can say that all of it, it's not fn times the cosine of anything or sine, all of it is acting in the y direction. All right, now we look at the rest of our plan, which is to use Newton's second law. Makes it pretty easy in this chapter. This, these two equations are pretty much always a part of our plan. And so now we can go into executing the plan. We can take this down here and we'll say, all right, well, x direction, we've, we've just got negative 490 Newtons equals 50 kilograms times a sub x, 
divide both sides by 50 kilograms and we get a sub x equals negative 4.9 meters per second squared okay it did come out negative and so you might be surprised this one was a positive value I guess this should say the magnitude of the answer because it, it actually didn't give a direction here and so if you picked down the slope to be your positive direction you would have gotten a positive value here but regardless if you do it correctly you're going to get that the acceleration is 4.9 meters per second squared down the slope all right now we can use this equation to add up all of these forces so we have fn and then minus 424 newtons okay or if we're looking up at the diagram fn is in the positive direction this red arrow for wy is in the negative direction and then the acceleration in the y direction you might be tempted to put in 9.8 for this but it's not the object is not in free fall it is sliding along and as i said before the velocity in the y direction is zero it's never moving in the y direction because of the way we defined our y direction so that's zero and so our normal force is equal to 424 newtons is the solution complete yes we have a magnitude and direction for our acceleration and we found the magnitude of our normal force so that's complete signs of the answers are correct just what we predicted them to be these have the correct units i did not go into this but the right here we had newtons divided by kilograms so we could have said that's a newton which is a kilogram meter per second squared divided by kilograms and so that's how we got units of meters per second squared there and is the magnitude of the answer reasonable well here we didn't really know what it would be but it makes sense that it's less than 9.8 since the skier is here there's um, gravity is what's pulling the skier down the slope but only a part of gravity and so there's no way that the skier could be going down with an acceleration greater than uh, 9.8 unless there was some sort of propulsion so a rope pulling him down or a rocket pushing him down something like that so that's reasonable uh, 424 is less than the weight of 490 so if the skier was on level ground the normal force would be 490 newtons which is just 50 times 9.8 but in this case it comes out less than that so that's also a reasonable value Again, be sure to consult that PowerPoint, put it into slideshow mode if you can, and click through and pay attention to all the different aspects in there. There's lots of good tips.